I wonder if there's hard one under it. Oh my god, wait. You need to do it right or it's gonna look weird. Break. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Ah! We're just moving into a different decorating style and I really like where we're going with it. Everybody. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Sabrina and we are diving into the new year with another project and this time we're making over our bedroom. If you've been following for a while, you might know when we moved here in 2020, he's digging in his litter box, isn't he? My cat has to go to the bathroom right now. When we moved here in 2020, the very first room that we actually finished was our bedroom so that we'd have somewhere comfortable to relax while we renovated the entire house. This bedroom has had some changes, but we were ready to give it a complete makeover and make it into a really cozy space. Andrew actually built the headboard behind me, made out of our old flooring and some leftover wood from the previous owner, uh, but we don't have a bed frame. So we're gonna build a bed frame in this video. We're gonna paint, we're gonna install a new light and move our light fixture into the center of our room and take down the peel and stick wallpaper behind me. You'll see, it's gonna be a whole transformation. Before we get started, let's talk about what the vibe is gonna be for this room and our inspiration for it. I really want it to be cozy and somewhere to relax, obviously somewhere for our dogs to be comfortable. We spend a lot of time in this room. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to start sharing the process with you guys. So let's get this bedroom emptied and we'll get ready to paint. Tightening, lefty loosey. Aha. We have never washed our curtains, so that is something we're gonna do. I wonder if there's hard one under it. Peel and stick wallpaper review. It wasn't that bad. It definitely doesn't leave a clean finish. Yeah, you would have to for sure fix some of the Because this wall holes. was all painted like for a, over a year. So this paint was adhered. The walls were primed and painted, like it was prepared properly and look at it. True. Okay, come here. Okay, get her. How do we do? Wow. Pretty good. Well, pretty bad if you don't like dog hair. One of the things I'm most excited about with this little bedroom makeover is fixing this door. I've talked about it before, but we just, maybe we didn't prep it well enough and then we have a dog that jumps at the door. These are all courtesy of Aspen. So we're gonna peel all the paint off the door, get it back down to white and then kind of decide what to do from there, either leaving it white and then it's easy to fix if she scratches it. Or I know a bunch of you suggested getting those like little acrylic sheets basically you can put on your door so your dog doesn't scratch the paint. I don't know. We'll kind of see what happens, but obviously this doesn't look so good. It's the end of day one. I think that's all we're gonna get to today. Hello. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow for another day. Today, we're gonna tackle this door. We've already scuffed it up and prepared it properly. That was our mistake. We didn't prepare it properly. Sometimes we get a little lazy. And um, I wanna show you, this is a piece of artwork that's gonna be hanging in here. I got it off Facebook Marketplace. Andrew calls it my 
stinky decor because it always smells like the previous owner's house. I also wanna show you guys while I have you here, this is our corner fireplace. Andrew built it last year and you guys always have questions about it. The plans for it are actually on our website. If you guys have any questions though, as you're building it and you need support, you can always send me an email. Um, but yes, anyways, that's that. We're gonna do some updates to it. And then over here, I didn't show you, but it's kind of like a prominent feature in our room. This is our walk-in closet, ta-da. That Andrew built um, 2021, I wanna say. It's actually not that big on the inside. It holds both of our wardrobes, which obviously, if you can tell by the way we're dressed, we don't have a lot of clothes, so it works for us. This whole area of our room used to be a closet and then another closet, so it was double closets. We took the one out, made it part of this closet, and then this became a door for access to our ensuite bathroom. So we didn't, it's a, you know what? I've explained it many times. You can watch another video if you want the details. Here it is, one coat finished. We're gonna move on to this wall now. Let's get this one sanded and primed. I don't know, is it? We're gonna move on to the fireplace. So as I said earlier, Andrew built this fireplace. I still love how it looks. I just want it to be a little less farmhouse-y. Like I feel like just the white and the black and the brown is kind of farmhouse with a little more character. So we picked up uh, two pieces of like a detailed um, cove molding and he's gonna frame it out like a little picture frame. I know someone's gonna tell me how small our TV is, but it works for us. Just don't put a TV the size in your house if you don't like how small it is. I like it, it's my little Michael Scott TV. I love it. I love this TV. And then we're gonna stain the mantle as well. Something dark and nice. And then paint the whole thing. So we'll get right into that. Yeah, that's kind of neat, I guess. It just adds a little detail to like an otherwise white blank wall. Just a slight little detail, that's all we asked for. The fish. Just like that, right? Perfect, yep, just like that. Okay, I think we're gonna go dark for the stain. It's like all or nothing, like we just have to commit when we do it. Cause we don't have this kind of wood to test a little sample. Usually that's what I would recommend you do before just diving in, but what the heck. Why didn't we do this? Because I liked the way that it looked. Like for the time that we installed it, it I liked it. It matched with the house and uh, whatever, but I feel like we're just moving into a different decorating style and I really like where we're going with it. Bear Marquee, hashtag not sponsored. We're using the color Garden Vista. Swatch test. Can you see? That is so pretty. Day three, here's the reveal of the color. I think it looks really good. We just finished doing the second coat on the walls, so we still have to touch up the trim, but we've been in discussion about whether or not to paint the trim green as well. Andrew's not on board with it, but I think it could look really good. You guys are seeing this after the fact, so maybe we'll end up painting the trim green. I don't know, you guys can comment and let us know what you would have done. But if we decide later to paint the trim, we can always go back and do it. But 
Uh, we were at Michael's today. We picked up some dye because we're gonna dye the curtains. I'll show you guys right now. We picked up some Rit dye in dark brown because the curtains in our bedroom, I want them to be a little darker. They're just like a taupey color and they were cheap off Amazon. So I thought that we could just try dyeing them and then in the event that it doesn't take or whatever, uh, we could just get new ones. They, these weren't expensive, but I have used this dye before. You have to use it with the proper material. This is not the proper material, so my expectation is low, but the store was all out of the dye specifically for synthetic materials. Anyways, we're gonna do two bottles, two bottles per set of curtains. We'll start with the first set, and then if it, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Brown dye going in, number two. A few moments later. We're 15 minutes in. Doesn't look the same as it did. Let it go for a little bit. What do you think? Yeah, a little bit longer. But I want it to be like a chocolate brown. That's definitely not going to happen. A few minutes later. So let's use three gallons of water. That's 120 liter. Or, yeah, that's 120 liter tote. Oh. I have used this dye before. That's way too much water. That's why it's so like diluted. Oh. Should we add more dye? You can, I guess, but I don't know if it's gonna do anything. Here's two more. This is turning into quite the production. One eternity later. It's been over an hour. It looks a little bit dyed. <laughs> okay, we have to dispose of this now. This is the part that I always forget to account for. You want me to do this? In the shower? Yeah, how else like do I get rid of it? Grow. Well, I think if we just dump it straight into the drain, it, it'll be okay. This is ridiculous. Oh, free. Oh, oh my. No. Ah! no. Oh, babe. What? <laughs> I want to show you guys. We just had a delivery show up for the bed. Gold sheets. Like, shiny gold <laughs> sheets. I for sure ordered them in taupe, but for some reason the company sent them in gold. Something about sleeping on the luxurious Egyptian gold sheets. <laughs> I don't know if it's really the vibe I was looking for. It's funny, it's a funny mistake. Curtain reveal. Here's the before. That's not the after. Here's the after. <laughs> My expectations were low because I knew that the material wasn't right for it. But for some reason in my brain, I'm like, well, I'll still spend $40 on dye instead of $40 on a new set of curtains. I wanna share with you guys, this is the frame. The other day I painted it, I did two layers of different gold paints on it to try and give it a more antique look. So I went with an orangey gold and then I went over it just last night with a more lighter shimmery champagne kind of gold. And we're gonna get that installed in place. You guys can kind of see this is, this was the vision. We're moving on to the next phase of our bedroom makeover. Bed frames are very expensive. The ones we were looking at are $2,000 to $3,000. So we opted to build our own. We just picked up all the material we're gonna need. It came to about $500. So hopefully I have everything we need and it'll save a bunch of money. Okay, so I have my little notebook here. My notebook. I have basic dimensions and stuff. It's not an official plan. A little disclaimer, I've never built a bed before. I've never cared to know the size of beds. So while I was looking up the actual proper size for a king size bed frame, I realized that the whole time we've lived here, our bed has actually been set up the wrong way. We had it the lengthwise going side to side, <laughs> 78 by 80 for the mattress to sit in. Whereas before we had it 80 wide by 78 long. Not a big deal, but it would be kind of hard to sell plans for a bed that's sideways. <laughs> so right now I'm cutting the headboard to length. Height is already set. We're gonna leave it at 48. That way we don't have to cut the sheet twice. Their side is gonna angle up and this six inch section is gonna get cut out. So you can get the idea, that's gonna be the headboard. I'm gonna rip uh, four inch pieces to go on either side and along the top. Hours later, we just finished 
painstakingly edge banding all of the pieces. If you haven't used edge banding before, it's an easy job, it's just a very time consuming job. It's a wood veneer that goes over the edges of all of the cut pieces so you don't see the end grain. They actually make a machine that does it for you. Some of them are even auto feed, auto glue, auto cut. Put the piece in, it goes along and does it and trims it and everything. We should have bought one for like $9,000 to build our bed. <laughs> <laughs> got that instead of the hot tub. Yeah. These pieces, I cut them four inches to put one on either side and then one across the top to kind of give it like a shaker look. We bought these bed rail brackets off Amazon. The idea is this goes on the rail and this goes on the headboard and footboard so that when you assemble it, they lock in like that and these screws you tighten up to make sure everything's secure. That's so funny. I can't believe that all this time we had our bed the wrong way. We also, in this process, learned that people don't use box springs anymore. Yeah, you don't have the coil mattress anymore, so you don't need a box spring. So these brackets are also from Amazon. They're bed rail brackets, I guess you could call them. They're just to add additional support pieces across for your slats to sit on. We're gonna start putting the slats in. The slats distribute the weight of the mattress over the distance of the bed. You can see if you didn't have these extra supports, it would just sag in the middle. Okay, everybody out, everybody out. I'm so sorry. We are ready to stain. We're using the color Aged Barrel by Verithane. I think it needs to be darker for sure. It's giving rustic. It's like all speckly. <laughs> what the heck? Maybe it'll get better. That's right, everybody. Things got worse because these little speckles are actually, as we learned, are from the rain because see, there's some raindrops on the wood. So we took a trip to the fabric store because we had to upholster a headboard instead. I actually wasn't gonna share any of this because sometimes when you mess up and you share it online, it's like rubbing salt in a wound. Like people will just make you feel even worse about it. But I think it's important to share because it was a learning curve because if this ever happens to you and if the stain doesn't look how you want it to, you can go in with a darker stain. So we did that on the outside to even out the splotches and then put on the new headboard, which in the long run, I do like it better with this fabric headboard but oh my goodness this was just a turn of event that we did not account for so I was very upset I wasn't even gonna post about it but you know let this be a lesson also maple is a kind of wood that really doesn't take well to stain it's a very difficult wood to stain which we didn't learn prior so now we know so anyways there you go for this, oh my goodness this feels so different without a box spring oh right all right well this has been such a task, but I think we've, we didn't accept our defeat and I think it came out really nice. All things to know, live and learn. But we're moving on to uh, cleaning the mattress. So uh, I'm gonna walk you guys through a couple different ways that I clean the mattress and then uh, we can get to styling and we'll wrap this project up. Don't go into 2024 with a dirty mattress. Give your mattress a clean. So there's a few different ways you can do it. I like to just vacuum the mattress and then you can put baking soda on it, wait for it to sit and dry out and then vacuum up the baking soda and then you can do like essential oils and things like that to make it smell good. I don't have any of that, so I always just do baking soda, but this is definitely overdue for a clean. So you guys can see we have some discoloration. It's not looking so good. It's kind of embarrassing actually, but whatever, we have dogs. I know how some of you guys will feel about allowing your pets on the furniture, but their lives are so short, so we will spoil them while they are here. And if that means sleeping in a king size bed, then they can do that all day long. The next thing I like to use is the Bissell green machine. Ours is very old and 
dirty. They sell them on Amazon. We've had this for years. I'm sure they've come out with newer models since this one, but if you're a dog owner, it's a must have because we're always spot cleaning something. Disgusting. All right, everybody, the bedroom is complete. We're so excited to reveal it to you, so let's take a look. I have been so excited to reveal this project to you guys. We've been sharing the short form videos on our social media over the last week, and a lot of you have loved keeping up with this project and sharing your input, but I wanted to give our YouTube subscribers an exclusive look at the reveal of this project. We're gonna stop here for now for a budget makeover. I think in total we ended up spending just under a thousand dollars, which isn't bad considering we bought too much paint and we ended up building a bed and uh, our little curtain mishap, but I'll tell you guys about that in just a minute. I think eventually we will come back to this bedroom and maybe add some molding detail to the wall or, I don't know, we'll see. But for now, we're super happy with it. It's been feeling very cozy in here and we've been getting a lot of good sleeps. But I wanna take you guys through and show you a few things that didn't end up making the video. Starting with our bedding, the duvet cover is from Bed Bath & Beyond and the ruffle pillows are from HomeSense. The rest of the bedding items we already had include including the bench at the foot of the bed. I wasn't able to replace our nightstands in time for the completion of this project. I didn't want to impulse buy something that I didn't really love and I haven't been able to find it on Facebook Marketplace just yet. So we are still using our nightstands. These are our raggedy old nightstands from Ikea. We got them when we first moved in together like 12 years ago. So they're due for a replacement. I just didn't want to impulse buy something that we didn't really love. The piece of artwork over our bed was also from Facebook Marketplace. I like it, but I think I might actually end up replacing it with something a little more floral. I've been on the hunt for something for that too, but again, I just don't want to buy something for the sake of buying. I want to really love it. Over in this corner, again, our same nightstand we already had. The sconces are from Joss and Maine. I do want to switch out these bulbs for a warm light instead of the LED brand bright white. One of you guys pointed that out on uh, TikTok, I think it was, that we should change it. And I do agree, we just haven't got to that yet. The artwork next to me, we bought it from Habitat for Humanity. It was just a cute little one with dogs. Obviously, this is the dog's bedroom too. I wanna tell you guys about the curtains. Obviously, you guys saw our little curtain fiasco. Joke's on me, I ended up using the curtains we already had, so what a waste of time that was. I ordered chocolate brown curtains off of Amazon and I ordered them in the wrong size. So there was no point in even ordering because this turned out nice. And then I matched them with a sheer white curtain over this window because I like the light that it brings in, but I don't like that you can see out at our neighbor's house. So I just wanted to have something that would allow the light while still like kind of obstructing the view a little bit. And I think that this was the perfect combination. Over at our fireplace, I thrifted the art as well, just from the Habitat for Humanity resale stores and added some fresh flowers. You might be noticing that the trim is no longer gold. I was staring at it for the longest time and decided that gold just wasn't the look. It was too harsh of a contrast and I didn't like that it was like a frame around a little TV. I don't know, I just couldn't get into it. So I ended up painting it the same color and I like it a lot more. 
more. Probably one of the coolest parts of this makeover is our, what do you call this thing? A fire, I don't know. It's like the fireplace set. It actually came with the house. So it was in the basement before we renovated and I've had it sitting in the garage ever since. And then I was looking at this space yesterday and I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to use the fire set in here. So obviously this is just an electric fireplace insert, but for the vibe and the look, I'm so happy that we were able to reuse this because it came with the house in the first place. Last thing is the beautiful chandelier. I got that on Facebook Marketplace as well. It's probably Andrew's favorite part of this makeover. It's from like a 100 year old farmhouse or something. I forget the backstory to it, but I did find it on Facebook and it's got a new home in our place. And I think it fits perfectly. I wanna thank you guys so much for keeping up with this project. It's been a really fun one and there will be more episodes and behind the scenes coming out this coming week on our social media. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. We share new projects and videos every single Sunday. So we will see you guys next Sunday for another new video. Bye.